Oh, greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to some more Warhammer Fantasy Lore, where today we will be taking a look at one of the more underappreciated types of greenskins inhabiting the Warhammer Fantasy universe, the Hobgoblin. Despite the fact that they are very rarely, if ever, mentioned these days, they were one of the original fantasy races all the way back in the first edition of Warhammer Fantasy. And whilst their key backstory has remained fairly consistent, they certainly have had some uh, whiplash changes over the course of their development, particularly in relations to their masters, or perhaps erstwhile masters, um, the Chaos Dwarves, themselves another faction that kind of just disappeared for all intents and purposes, and even recently, or you know, near the end of the death of Warhammer Fantasy, whilst there were some new Chaos Dwarf entries, and they were acknowledged as still being a part of the universe, they had lost that unique and special appearance and flavour and theme to them. Whilst the Chaos Dwarves, like pretty much every Warhammer faction, does... <laughs> borrow heavily either from actual human history or from Tolkien, the Chaos Dwarves borrowed from a rather unusual source, the Middle Eastern Assyrian style. That's a pretty darn rare look, and when you also combine that with the fact that these are dwarves that like magic, you have two quite unique, quite unusual ingredients smacked together to create something that actually feels quite genuinely fresh and interesting. <laughs> and so, of course, they have removed them. <laughs> Can't have too much of that nonsense around, can you? In comparison, the new models, they just look too chaosy. They just look like tiny Norse marauders, really, particularly the face-covering helmets I hate. You'll notice in pretty much all of the early Chaos Warriors models and artwork, in fact, I think literally all, it's all open-helmeted, because their snaggle-tooth yet still recognizably dwarven countenance was a part of the unique flavor of them. And of course, the awesome-ass helmets are almost entirely gone now. That is a bloody tragedy right there. And the bull centaurs? Oh, don't get me started. I mean, they don't even look like bull centaurs anymore. They just look like some chaos freak thing. Uh, anyways, I'm not supposed to be talking about the Chaos Dwarves, I'm supposed to be talking about the Hobgoblins. Though they themselves have also undergone some rather drastic visual changes. To begin with, they were very clearly kind of a middle ground in the green-skinned races. You had the kind of ratty, diminutive goblins, very clearly non-human. Then you had the huge, hulking, brutish monster orcs. And then you had the hobgoblins, which were perhaps more reminiscent of... Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's view of the goblins, kind of human-esque. They'd wear human armor, although rag-tagged. They'd use swords, shields, helmets, leather armor, greaves, stuff like that. And they would fight as organized warbands. In fact, one of the earlier interpretations named them the Morngul Renegades, where they specifically made up mercenary warbands, which had broken with the great Hobgobbler Khan. And there's an important mention as well, because the Hobgoblin Empire, or the Hobgoblin Carnet, has been a pretty darn consistent string throughout the Hobgoblin's history. Although they've never really been fully explored, off in the eastern steppes there is a vast green skin empire, easily the largest in the entire Warhammer world, ruled by the legendary Hobgobbler Khan. And 
by that title as well as the design, I think you can probably see where they're drawing inspiration from here. We can also see this in, of course, the Hobgoblin Wolf Riders and Ogler Khan's Wolf Boys, um, an early mercenary regiment. But whilst this part of their backstory remained quite consistent, they were eventually kind of um, phased out in a way. You ended up instead then with having the greenskins consisting primarily of the orcs and goblins, whilst the hobgoblins were moved over to the Chaos Dwarves as a slave species. In fact, specifically, uh, the hobgoblins were one out of the three goblinoid races, as already mentioned, and the greenskins were enslaved by the Chaos Dwarves, who used them to fuel their vast industries. But one day, the orcs and the goblins had enough of this shit. A revolution was launched, sparked in particular by the Chaos Dwarves getting a little bit ahead of themselves and creating the Black Orcs. That is one of their origin stories, whether or not that is truly canon these days, well, I think they've got three at this point, so, you know, pick and choose whichever one you like. Anywho, the revolution had started. The Chaos Dwarves had been caught completely unprepared and led by the ferocity, the brute strength and cunning leadership of the Black Orcs, the Dawisar were swept away, pushed out of bastion after bastion, losing wall after wall, tower after tower. It seemed as if their grand, singular capital city, Tsar Nagrund, would be burned, raised, and wrecked by green-skinned monsters, when suddenly the hobgoblins thought, hmm, opportunity and backstabbed the rest of the orcs and goblins so thoroughly <laughs> that they turned the course of the entire battle in the Chaos Dwarves' favour. The orcs and goblins, those who survived, fled the city, and those who didn't they were either killed or re-enslaved by the Chaos Dwarves, who in recognition of the hobgoblins' great service to the Chaos Dwarf nation, <laughs> kept them on the slaves. <laughs> they're, they're chaos dwarves after all, not good Samaritans, but instead of working in the foundries, toiling in the mines, etc., they would be the overseers of the remaining slave population, a privileged class of servants. Which incidentally suited the hobgoblins just perfectly. Oh really, Massa? You will continue to feed me, care for me, and give me a roof over my head, and now also people for me to bully and extort in turn? <laughs> Ideal. Where do I sign? Uh, this little um, disagreement also, by the way, marked the beginning of a complete and absolute schism between the hobgoblins and all other greenskins. Uh, previously, they had been fighting in the same armies, though they did have some different rules as to how animosity and uh, goblinoid bickering worked. They were considered to be part of the same faction fighting under the same flag. After this, however, the orcs and the goblins absolutely hated the hobgoblins, um, unsurprisingly, and it was even said that the hobgoblins were even more backstabby and treacherous than any other race of greenskin. Eh, that's a funny aside there as well. You may notice on some of these older models, it looks as if their head is kind of oddly low in their shoulders. That's because they were humped backered creatures, the humpback apparently being a natural evolution so as to make them, and I should she not, more difficult to backstab. <laughs> Oh, I do love the proper old school lore. And whilst they had lost the alliance with the other green-skinned tribes, they had of course gained one with the Chaos Dwarves, um, and would continue to fight in the Chaos Dwarves armies for, well, the one edition they were allowed to exist, pretty much. 
They had infantry, wolf riders, heroes, and even, as a sign of respect from the Chaos Dwarves, their own rudimentary artillery. And they weren't complete chaff either, they were chaffier than the actual Chaos Dwarf warriors, to be sure, but I remember them being fairly reasonable, and a nice- oh god, again. I really miss the Chaos Dwarf army. It was not only really visually unique and interesting lore-wise as well, but it was so bloody colourful. Having those awesome fancy little hats you could paint up in all kinds of insane colours, fighting right alongside the scruffy looking greenskins with all of their shields, their axes held high as if waving. Ah, there, those models were so good. The Hobgoblin Wolf Riders in particular, I mean, Look at these guys and tell me they do not look like the perfect kind of Eastern Steppe riding Mongol inspired warband of mayhem. Ah, oh, so good. And here now, by comparison, we have the Chaos Dwarves being these flat, boring, featureless creatures. <sighs> oh well. The Hobgoblins, as favoured servants of the Chaos Dwarves, do at least make a lot of sense considering their previous backstory as mercenaries. And as a part of the green-skinned race, they would undoubtedly have been enslaved alongside their uh, brethren. <laughs> previous brethren, anyways, um, by the Chaos Dwarves, um, and their loyalties always open for purchase would also certainly have uh, prompted them to see the silver lining and turning on the rest of the orcs and the goblins. Though what exactly happened to them after that is a little bit more difficult to determine, uh, mostly because that part probably was actually never written down. As mentioned, after the Chaos Dwarves fell out of favour, the Hobgoblins that served them pretty much followed alongside. We are assuming that the Hobgoblins still serve the Chaos Dwarves, as we know that the Chaos Dwarves still exist. But the only real proper mentions of hobgoblins these days is in the form of the hobgoblin Carnet. And again, they've undergone some pretty darn radical changes. Uh, previously they were more along the lines of a mix between human and greenskins, whereas now they have gone far more again in the human direction. The Hobgoblin Carnet use a lot of armour, armour made by themselves, they use a lot of weaponry, they use a lot of relatively complex technology. And of course, they have a far more advanced society than the tribally based structure of the Orcs and Goblins uh, society. <laughs> it's not really a word that fits, does it? As they are far more heavily based on their uh, Mongolian steppe raider inspiration. They have a quite considerable infrastructure and logistical organisation as they raise huge quantities of domesticated wolf pets as their mounts. Having armies large enough to not only control one of the geographically largest empires in the entire Warhammer world, but to also fight against encroachment from enemy forces. Uh, both from Cathy, Cathay, Cathy, you know, the China Empire, and even more importantly, from the cool barbarians to the north. Another Mongolian kind of inspired faction, though in this case, Chaos Marauders. The cool are said to be so violent, so goddamn dangerous, that even the warriors of Chaos in the northern steppes and the various other warbands in Norska fear their coming. The cool are as great a disaster to the Norskans as a storm of chaos is to Kislev. <laughs> that should uh, put it into some perspective. And yet the Hobgoblin Carnet is able to maintain their frontiers against the cool. Quite impressive. 
Now, one might, of course, pipe up with the objection that this is essentially pure conjecture, because we know so very little about this part of the universe. They might not even be fighting at all. Perhaps the Hobgoblin Carnet, due to their past as, um, well, not them directly, but the Hobgoblin's ability to become mercenaries and serve others. Maybe they are a arm of the cool. Or maybe they are so vast, so powerful, so well organized, so dangerous, and so refined in their tactics that the cool are actually their prey rather than the other way around. There are mentions, for example, of cool migrations taking place. Maybe this is the ebb and flow of the never ending battle between the hobgoblins and the chaos marauders. One side gets an advantage, driving hobgoblin hordes into Cathy, or to raid the mountains of Morn, descending upon the trade routes. Maybe another period of time, the hobgoblins are in ascendance, causing a migration of cool to invade the lands of the Norskans. Uh, maybe they're even allies. Uh, seems unlikely, but um, we are dealing in theoreticals right now after all. And speaking of theoreticals as well, the great Hobgoblin Khan. He has been a fairly stable entity for... It must have been hundreds, if not thousands of years now. Because, bear you in mind again, he was around when the Hobgoblins were mercenaries. He was around before they were seemingly enslaved by the Chaos Dwarves. Now, of course, this part of Warhammer's timeline, or, hell, damn near any part of Warhammer's timeline, is fluid. Open to um, interpretation and radical sudden change. But there are, of course, possibilities here. He might simply never have been defeated. I don't think there's any indication or mention of a green skin dying of old age. Perhaps they are practically immortal so long as they don't die in battle. After all, green skins, orcs in particular, are said to continue growing throughout their entire life. That means that their body's source of energy never actually depletes, it would seem. If they just continue to grow and grow and grow, then of course the need for energy to maintain the body will also continue to grow and grow and grow. Which would normally lead to the body eventually simply just no longer being able to provide enough energy and death following soon thereafter. But in the case of Greenskins, then, maybe their ability to produce energy somehow, ludicrously enough, grows alongside their need, which would again make them functionally immortal. Perhaps the Great Khan is the same Khan that has always ruled of the Hobgoblins, or more likely it is some form of title. Whichever Hobgoblin comes to challenge the master and manages to kill him becomes the next Great Hobgobbler Khan. That would certainly make a degree of sense, particularly also in regard to their inspiration, the Great Mongolian Empire, where of course the boss man became Khan. There is of course also always the possibility of a magic being involved, as the magic of the East is essentially a mystery as well. We do know that the Skaven, of course, waffled over there and uh, were taught the skills of Clan Eshin in terms of assassination and some sorcery as well from the Masters of Nippon. Magic that doesn't seem to be particularly commonplace or even really known of in the rest of the Warhammer world. It's not impossible that they could have cracked the secret to eternal life. Mayhaps, mayhaps, even chaos is involved in some way, shape, or form. Now, orcs can, greenskins more correctly, can be influenced by chaos, or, hmm, they can be in 40k. I remember an article in White Dwarf, which is as 
close to canon as you get, I suppose, in a universe with the unreliable narrator and that nonsense, which mentioned chaos-corrupted greenskins. Uh, Nurgle, particularly, I think. So, once the hobgoblins do not display any overt outward signs of corruption, it's not impossible that the reason why they and the cool have not torn each other's throat out completely is that there's some kind of kinship there? Maybe the Great Khan is some kind of uh, chaos puppet champion of sorts? Far-fetched, I would say, but again, we are theory crafting here. But let us return to something a little bit more physical as well. The discussion of exactly what the hobgoblin form is. Because we've seen three major different types right now. We start out, of course, with the Morngul Renegades. These are the ones with, you can see a little bit of a, little bit of a goblin-esque face, but not overtly Warhammer goblin E, and the body itself is more reminiscent of a stocky human than a straight-up green skin. These were the far more Tolkien-esque hobgoblins. Then that evolved into the far more proper hobgoblin -y aspects of the Chaos Dwarf Servants. These were way more unique, both in their manner of dress, their fancy little hats, their weaponry, and this was also where a lot of their um, feel kind of solidified. In their manner of dress, in their manner of arms and armor, they are very distinct from the green-skinned orcs and goblins. They wear their fancy little uniformed helmets, suggesting a level of military organization. They use fairly good weapons, they operate in an organized fashion, and they have frenzy. They're way more tough frontline fighters than the goblins, yet nowhere near as physically imposing as the orcs. And you also have their distinct physical appearance, the hump, obviously, to prevent backstabbing which I suppose does mean that there is indeed honor amongst hobgoblins, as whilst they would obviously stab one another in the back, they would never go so low as to shiv one another in the guts, of course. <laughs> Logic, but hey, details. They also have that very clear pot belly. I do love the pot belly. Uh, presumably they have quite the luxurious living, both being fed by the Chaos Dwarves as favoured agents and also extorting considerable quantities of additional grub from all of their servants in turn. They also had a little bit more of a... Um, almost fey look to them with their long ears. And then today, our current day Warhammer Hobgoblins are less of the unique race that they were once. Even the more like stereotypical hobgoblin types like um, Ogla Khan and his wolf boys, for example, you can still very much so see that they are a distinct race and faction from the goblins and the greenskins. Whereas today, you've got stuff more like this again, where they really just look like goblins, but with furry hats riding wolves. Like the forest goblins, for example. Uh, technically kind of a different type, but like night goblins or forest goblins aforementioned, they are different tribes, really, rather than separate species or races, specifically. Now, I do remember, I, I seem to recall, I think this was in White Dwarf 2, where there was some sort of explanation suggesting that the rationale behind the different visual appearances was that the hobgoblins in the Carnot were far freer. They were free from the oppression of the orcs and were therefore able to grow larger, more vicious, and become less cowardly since they were not 
not constantly oppressed. They were, in fact, indeed, the oppressors themselves. And considering, again, the idea that greenskins never cease growing, there is absolutely a certain degree of logic to that. <sighs> Though... Perhaps the even more reasonable explanation would quite simply be that there has been a lot of confusion internally within Games Workshop as to exactly what the Hobgoblins are. If they are simply a different tribe of goblin that happened to grow huge off in the far distant east, or if they are indeed a separate species of green skin entirely, with their own attributes and physical appearance. Again, I do love the good old-fashioned hobgoblins, the potbelly and humpbackers. A fine combination. Though I do also admit the temptation of having the Hobgoblin Carnet, an army that fights almost entirely with hit-and-run light cavalry mounted on wolves, I mean, that's pretty awesome as well. Though, a wolf. How would a wolf function the same way as a horse for horse archers? Huh. I mean... Can it carry as much weight? Can it carry as much armor, as much ammunition? Can it run for as long, for as far, for as fast? I actually don't know. Maybe it is in fact a superior mount for horse archery. See, Australian Mongolians should have tamed wolves to ride on. They would have needed to find some pretty big ones, but uh, it would have been worth the effort, don't you think? Anywho, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I feel like this has been more of a ranty appreciation video than necessarily a straight-up lore video, but the Hobgoblins have somewhat uh, limited materiel to work with, and I figured it'd be interesting to take a little bit of a journey through their evolution, seeing where they came from and their different varieties. Hopefully, you'll have enjoyed it. Until next time, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.